Well, welcome to Out and About, brought to you by KC RVs. I'm John Thomas, alongside J.E. Cornwell, and as well, Greg Wallman with Spacecraft Manufacturing. We're talking about the wonderful world of RVs today, and I've got two of the best people to ask questions with me today. J.E., the owner here at KC RVs and Motorsports. Uh, J.E., tell us a little bit about yourself. What led to you creating this opportunity down here for good people? And tell us a little bit about your background. Well, well I'm glad to be here, glad to get this thing rolling. I have a finance background. I have a company called AMPR Finance Services, and we've done a lot of financing for RV and boat dealers. I have a passion for camping and the outdoors. So location, right here on 71 Highway, we're on the highway right off 140th Street. We have 82,000 cars traveling by us uh, in one of the directions they're going to the lakes and the campsite. So that was why we picked the spot. The industry itself, of course, right now, uh, it is very good. I mean, it's a unique position where we find ourselves in the RV industry, where you're in a buyer and a seller's market. You got sellers that can't keep enough inventory, can't get the inventory because of the supply chains that are so backed up. You've got buyers that are taking advantage of getting into this camping world because they don't want to take their families to Disney World or they, you know, these plans are getting on a plane or, or, or different things that scare them. Well, they can get in a camper and they can go camp and, and we're excited about that. In addition to the RVs, we brought on the motorsports because they kind of go hand in hand uh, since we do carry some of the RV toy haulers. Those toy haulers are usually going to haul around a, a motorcycle or a side-by-side -side four-wheeler of some kind, a golf cart, and or a scooter. So we now have the KC Motorsports. But, and I'll introduce Greg, but before that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my mask. Um, we here at KCRVs, just like every other small business in, in this area, we wanna pitch in. We wanna do whatever we can to help prevent this disease from spreading as much as we can. We are all safe here, uh, but at this time, I think we're gonna go ahead and pull our masks off. But Greg, go ahead and tell us a little bit about you and, and spacecraft. So yeah, I had the opportunity to uh, meet J.E. He and uh, some of his uh, colleagues at the Overland Park show and um, love the, the tax of products that they have and um, mentioned that we'd love to be able to pass customers on to them that uh, weren't able to use our product and um, started developing a relationship. J.E. came out and met with us at the factory. It's one of the things that uh, really helps people understand who we are. We're the only full custom manufacturer of travel trailers, fifth wheels, and semi units in the U.S. So it makes it uh, difficult sometimes for people to understand what that really means. A factory tour really helps out with that. Um, and we've been in business since 1962. Uh, most people don't know about us. Most of our customers are on the coast and um, outside of the, the metro area. But being able to show some people here in the metro area um, our capabilities has been fun. Greg, how did you get into this industry and what was it that really uh, got you along your way? It's a kind of a fun story. So my background is finance also like JE. Um, I was an accountant out of college and uh, worked at Deloitte and Touche uh, here in Kansas City and then got into banking and was in the finance world for almost 20 years and then uh, was in consulting for a few years, management consulting, and uh, that fulfilled me um, back in my professional services. Um, we started working with a company that sold companies uh, to help them do that better, faster, and um, was able to see companies coming through that pipeline. And uh, this was one of the companies, and it fit uh, me very well. My father built custom homes in Nebraska when I was growing up, so I was around that. And um, my professional services career let me work with customers, um, new customers, every project. Um, and since each one of our units is completely custom and we're designing it to the customer specifications, it is a new project for everyone that leaves the factory. So those things were all very intriguing to me and really uh, what drove me to um, put my name in the hat for buying the organization and was successful. And what about the actual manufacturing of these trailers? 
Um, how have the technologies affected you over time and how are they growing now and what are you looking for in the future with some of the technologies that go into producing these units? So since spacecraft's been around since 1962, we have seen a lot um, as a company. Obviously, I haven't been there for that entire time, but uh, we have some collective knowledge and wisdom that we've built up. Um, we actually had the first patent on the slide-out room technology um, from the 70s, so that was kind of an interesting thing with us. And uh, so there's uh, a lot of fun stuff that we've experienced over the years. We've progressed from uh, starting out with just putting the uh, trailer campers on pickup trucks into fifth wheels and then we introduced the semi product in the uh, mid 90s uh, for our carnival and circus customers they wanted something a little bit larger and a little bit more robust um, to do their office and living quarters while they're out on the road so we've seen a progression just internally from who we're dealing with but now that we're uh, kind of in these times we're seeing a lot more people want to do full-time they're wanting to live that uh, wanderlust uh, and and go out and see all of the uh, national parks and uh, a lot of them are even raising their kids so for us we're building them a mobile home that can go out and they can raise their kids in it plus they can also work from the, the unit uh, a lot of them are IT professionals that can work anywhere and we're seeing a lot of uh, technology improvements uh, to facilitate those people working virtually uh, so we have to be able to do the Wi-Fi um, cellular uh, boosting so they can facilitate calls uh, everybody wants a streaming technology in um, the units now so they don't have the uh, satellite dish or the antenna that they have to deal with. So uh, there's a lot of progression in the RV world, very similar to um, custom homes. Uh, and since we're kind of on that high-end uh, custom home level, um, we're getting to experience a lot of really fun uh, advancements. When I came in here yesterday uh, with you, Greg, it was cool in here. It was like a meat locker. And I was like, wow, this, this is absolutely amazing. He said, yeah, and it's running off of batteries. I said, batteries? He said, yeah, there's an equivalent of 300 deep well batteries operating this thing. Tell me more about energy and the power sources. Uh, there's a lot of technology and a lot of things right now that are going into batteries. Um, tell me about the challenges of powering these units. So units like this uh, are interesting because you have 12 volt uh, technology which is very traditional to the RV world but then when they want residential items uh, you've got to go into the 110 and 220 world so there's some complexity to the electrical engineering with them uh, just from a usage perspective but then that also uses a lot of electricity so you need to be able to facilitate that uh, lithium ion right now is the the strongest technology um, in batteries it's not cheap but it gives you a lot of functionality. So for instance, this unit has a 20 kilowatt battery pack in it that's lithium ion and it's at 58 volts um, from the Volta company. And uh, it allows us to run everything in the trailer uh, for the entire day. Uh, in this case, we're running our residential mini split system, uh, which is very efficient from an electronic uh, perspective. Uh, TV, lights, refrigerator, everything's running off of that. Uh, yesterday we started uh, running off a of battery about 9 a.m. and then we ended at uh, 6 p.m. for the, the show day and we were down to just under 50% on the battery. Wow. So um, it lets you know that you can dry camp or, or boondock very effectively even with air conditioning now um, with that technology. We've also got solar on the roof uh, that helps augment that and uh, 1800 watts of solar. It was a great sunny day yesterday so yeah. it was uh, we were able to harvest some of that energy from the sun and uh, keep that battery from going down as fast. Can you tell us a little bit more specifically about this 2020 show trailer that we're sitting in right now? So this trailer has just about every bell and whistle that you can think of from an RV perspective. Uh, there's some stuff that's unique to spacecraft. We do a fiberglass roof, um, a fiberglass ceiling, which provide, uh, we provide a lifetime warranty on that. Uh, we also build our own chassis which is uh, very important to us. It allows us to do all of the custom things that customers want. Uh, sometimes we have to change how the, the chassis is uh, put together and structured so that uh, we can facilitate things like uh, we're doing 600 gallons of water on the unit that's currently in production. Um, we've done a soda fountain. Uh, we also earlier this year did a uh, 
bedroom that was on a lift for a toy hauler and the entire bedroom went up which was the the bed the nightstands a dresser that had a tv in the lift so it was a lift within a lift which was kind of fun and then they were able to park their uh, jeep wrangler underneath so this has some of those same uh, technologies in it we've got a heated tile floor we've got a 12 kilowatt generator to help recharge the battery along with the solar system and if you're on shore power all the wood you see in here is real wood so we've got uh, walnut here in the rear section of the trailer with some zebra accent wood and then up front there's uh, cherry wood we've got tile behind the uh, kitchen for the backsplash uh, we've got tile in the bathroom for a backsplash we've got a full residential king mattress in the bedroom so there's just a lot of really fun stuff with this that makes it uh, feel like home uh, one other thing we're the only uh, rv company in the u.s right now painting walls so the walls in here are painted. Uh, it's a very subtle uh, nuance, but it makes it feel like home because the walls are painted. It's not your typical RV uh, vinyl wallpaper or those things like that. And you can change colors then uh, going down the road. Our units are on the road for 20 or 30 years, even with full-time use. So most of our customers' problems is they have to figure out how to remodel their unit and bring it up to date versus uh, trading in and getting a new one. Okay, so this is basically the Cadillac version of the RV. And, and it just so happens that right here on our lot, J.E. just brought in a used unit. J.E., tell us a little bit more about how special it is to actually get one of these on the lot. And tell us about the one that's sitting here today. Well, the customers were customers of Greg and Spacecraft. The owners uh, were very involved in the build. Uh, they knew what they wanted. They uh, had questions. They didn't want a whole lot. I mean, they weren't looking for, you know, something like this, but they wanted something that was, you know, uh, more than or had the options and accessories that they wanted, not something that, you know, something similar like a Montana or a Grand Design would have told them, okay, here's what you have and you can get these couple of options. In fact, that made them unhappy, and that's when they found um, spacecraft. So uh, they they loved the camper. It was the RVing life. They were a retired couple uh, that they wanted to get out and about, if you will, and that's why they wanted that. Um, their daughter had some children, and so that grandparenting became more than what the RVing was for them. So. Greg and, and uh, Spacecraft, they had contacted them and wanted to make sure that uh, if they were to sell it, they get you know a good dollar for it. Uh, Spacecraft said at that time that they would help them to sell it. When I was at Spacecraft here a few weeks back, I saw the camper. I asked Greg about it, and then from that point, he put me in contact with uh, Dave and Sue, who are great folks, they called, we visited, they said, yeah, we'd love to put our consignment, uh, our camper here on consignment. And the fact we had Greg coming was made it even better because he was going to be able to do what we call an F&B or features and benefits of that camper to my staff who, when they have a customer that wants information either by phone, by email, or, or web lead, uh, or walks right on the lot that you guys are able to get out and, and uh, uh, have the right answers. So with that, they came out, uh, we got to talking, uh, we uh, hit it off fairly well and then they told me what they were pulling it with they were pulling it with a and you can tell by some of the sizes of these things that they build that they need big trucks David had gone out and bought a for this RV he went out and bought a, a big f-350 with a big diesel motor capable of pulling you know 17 18,000 pounds and uh, so I said, boy, I'll tell you, <laughs> if you're not going to be using that truck anymore, it would definitely help us to sell that. So the next day they came back out and brought the truck. So there's a lot of different moving parts to getting out of your home, getting hooked up to an automobile or an RV or a camper of some sorts, getting it pulled to where you're going, getting it hooked up, taking care of your gray water, your black water, your fresh water, staying powered hauling your toys, your food, 
all these things that come with an RV lifestyle, there's a lot of moving parts. And so for me, there's a lot of questions involved. And we get that a lot. We get young couples that have never seen an RV, never been inside of one. Um, I think that if we went camping together, J.E., I'd probably be hanging out in here, okay? That's, I, I can see you outside eating your apple, getting some grapefruit, going for a small walk, enjoying the outdoors. But I'll be honest, I'm going to camp out in front of a 60-inch TV uh, because I, that's just more homely. So you got a little bit of something for everybody in the outdoors. And over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about that on our podcast. But I really want to take advantage of Greg being here. How long do you think we could keep Greg here at the lot before anybody realizes he's missing? <laughs> well, I don't know about this Greg, but I certainly know they'll miss this camper. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's been really fun uh, to be here and um, meet the people that have come through. Met a lot of great people yesterday and looking forward to meeting a bunch more today. Um, and it's true, there's a lot of education to these uh, uh, units, especially ours, um, being full custom and we build up to 57 feet. So most people, they hear that and they're like, how is that even possible? The, the Carnival customers are the ones that use the, the large uh, semi units for us. And a lot of people think, you know, they're, they're carnies, they're just out there on the road, they're not super sophisticated. And, and one of the things that really pushes them towards spacecraft is, you know, our units are on the road for 20 years. So for them, it's a great business investment. And uh, it's also kind of a status symbol within uh, the carnival industry to have a spacecraft trailer. And it's used both, right? Yes. I mean, for business purpose or, you know, cash windows, right? And, and obviously the sleeping quarters. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so we literally put cash windows like a bank into them so they can facilitate the transactions with their um, team taking cash out to the, the rides or the, uh, the food uh, locations and then um, paying them as well. And that kind of parlays into the auctioneering business as well. You go onto these sites, you've got big auctions, there's a cash window, there's a need to actually lock up and secure that money. Have you had any experience uh, with the auction business? Um, have not, but uh, definitely we would love to have somebody come and talk to us about that. I'm going to put that out on the interwebs right now. <laughs> if you're in the auction business, you need to come hook up with one of these fine spacecraft. That's a great point. Yeah. So we've got a very broad spectrum of uh, customer that comes to us. We have uh, like Dave and Sue that came and they want a unit that's going to serve them well and she wanted to be able to um, quilt that's and right. he wanted to be able to tie his uh, flies for That's fishing, right. um, so we, we built them uh, that, but we, we get people from, from everywhere. We're, we're uh, potentially going to be working with a, a veterinary company to do a mobile veterinary unit um, so they can actually uh, do surgery and see animals uh, on those. Matching up a person's need with the vehicle, that's a really important aspect, isn't it, Jay? Absolutely. It's, that's exactly, I mean, when somebody walks on a lot, a lot of times they have no idea. You're talking about this new, as we call them, the Corona campers. They have never even pulled a U-Haul. So to them, getting into this lifestyle is uh, life-changing. They don't know what they want. Simple questions, obviously, you know, do they have kids? Kids are gonna be uh, unique with campers. That's why a lot of the stick and tin models are gonna be cost-effective but they're gonna be the, the biggest floor plan, of course, is gonna be the bunkhouse. It's gonna be where you can, you know, uh, like the bunk beds for the kids at home, they're gonna be the same similar uh, floor plans on, on the campers. So, and another question, obviously, if uh, they're empty nesters, you know, maybe they don't want that. Uh, for example, you know, we had that hideout here that uh, was on a consignment um, from empty nesters and of course then the people that uh, were interested and ended up buying it were also uh, had retired and uh, didn't have children so that was perfect for them. Um, other questions that we ask are you know where are you going to be going you know with this camper do you plan on going to long distance camping Colorado let's say or are you just planning on going down to Lake of the Ozarks and and uh, renting a spot at, at the KOA. You know, those are things that, you know, when we find a customer that's not even sure where they're gonna go with it, I mean, you know, what, what's, what's really brought them on here? So a lot of times we're kind of 
taken that information as they build it and we'll show them different things that they want to uh, you know explore and then we get to a point where they're like oh yeah that's that is what I want that is what I'm looking for another scenario would be the the toy hauler you've got more and more in today's world uh, you've got the scooters have become so popular as you well know we've got the new electric scooters here well they make great uh, RV companions and camper companions because if you do get on a lot let's say you're there for two weeks and you want to throw the scooter in the back of the truck or you've got a, uh, a hitch gate to carry the scooter and then you're at the campsite and you get to tool around with that same thing can be said really with the golf carts the golf carts are kind of that way as well because a lot of times you know uh, the communities have different uh, rules and regulations but um, you know, the, the toy hauler has become so popular in today's RV world is because more and more people are, are buying the, the side-by-sides, the golf carts, the scooters, and of course, uh, just recently, unaffected by the COVID, uh, the Harley industry and Sturgis, you know, they, <laughs> they weren't going to let that defeat them. So they had their rally again this year, and uh, believe it or not, uh, more than half of those riders will put them in a toy hauler or put them on a trailer and trailer them up to the Black Hills. So when, when we find what the customer is looking for, uh, you know, specifically, it's easy. But when we get that customer, as you well know, we're kind of walking them through, well, I'm not sure. Show me that camper and, you know, around the lot they go. So we, we want to try to match the, the perfect camper with that, with that customer. I'm kind of curious, want to get an opinion from both of you two. The last couple of months in the RV industry, we've had some of the highest grossing sales ever in the history. And RVing has been around well over 100 years now. Uh, people have been wanting to get out into the environment, out into nature. Why is it, do you think, that COVID had this effect on our industry and our desire to get back out into nature and travel and, and be, out, be outside more. Uh, go ahead with you, Jay. Well, who knows? I mean, who knows why there was a freaking run on toilet paper? I mean, I don't know, but that was crazy. We get COVID and everybody wants to wipe their ass, I guess. I'm not sure why we had such a run on toilet paper. Nobody knows, but it was hard to find toilet paper. Not that that's why what camping is, but um, no, I think camping has become the kind of the norm. And it's not the long distance camping, it is the short distance camping, um, the, the day trip type camping. Here in Kansas City, uh, we're unique in where we are based on uh, the relationship or the distance to a lot of playgrounds, um, like the Ozarks, one of the places that, uh, that I have a place. And it is, you know, two and a half hours from here to there. You can get down there uh, if you've got, and there's a lot of different options why these people are buying campers now is because they can get down there, they can get a, a pad spot right by the lake or a campground spot and, you know, spend the weekend. If they've got a full family, I mean, they can prepare, buy their groceries, uh, non-perishables mainly, and, and get down there if they've got a week planned or a two-week period planned and they can save a lot of money they don't have to take the plane trip they don't have to buy all the tickets to you know the amusement parks they don't have to do all that of course they can add that to their trips but I think certainly the younger people uh, the people in their 30s and maybe even younger that are that have children and they're trying to keep the children entertained I think camping has actually uh, become more of a family bonding experience than anything else uh, because I know I've taken two trips uh, with two different children to the Disney worlds and it was very costly <laughs> and very frustrating so and your, I know that your this. feet still hurt <laughs> that's right so uh, <laughs> but I think that's why I mean I, I'm sure there's lots of reasons but that's one of them yeah I think um, you know generally people were afraid they didn't necessarily completely understand how COVID was going to impact life in general and traveling away from home um, you don't know how things are going to be in another community um, and then obviously planes uh, there's a lot more uh, op opportunity to contract it because everybody's in a very confined space so I think that 
fear was part of it. But I think also what it let people do is realize maybe some stuff that they did in their childhood. So, hey, I loved camping when I was little. I want to give that same experience to my children. Uh, and it, there's there's more capability now even, you know, than when, when I was a little kid. Uh, these campers can do things that you couldn't do back then. You don't have to have a tent. Uh, you can rent them. A lot of people are renting them now. Um, or it can be very cost effective also to buy them because of the money you're saving on some of your trips. And you can experience cap camping in a whole whole new um, light than what you had in the past. And you're also unplugging a little bit. So you don't necessarily have cell phone coverage sometimes. Or if you do, it's very limited. So it does force the family to bond a little bit. So we have an unknown pandemic. It, it basically affects the world. Uh, you get a little bit of, of unexpected consequences, I would call them. Uh, people begin to move out into the wilderness. You're getting your fresh air. Uh, you're out in the sunlight. You've kind of created your own bubble. I know that the uh, professional sports leagues are doing that right now. They're calling it the bubble. They're keeping everybody separated. And then, you know, you're stuck with your kids. You're stuck with your parents. You have absolutely no way to opt out of that program whatsoever. Um, but then I, I think that people begin to rediscover a little bit of family time and what that really means, the closeness of family. You, you turn off the internet, um, you know, the, the television shows are kept to a minimum. You're walking outside, you're throwing rocks again. I mean, I was told 17,000 times to quit throwing rocks. But you find out that's one of the few things you have to do or can do during this period of time. So I see all those kind of contributing. You guys touched on those a little bit. Um, it's very interesting times we live in, uh, and we're very fortunate to be in this industry and actually be able to share with people the opportunity to get out and take part um, of the camping environment. And I know that a lot of people did. They got to the national parks, and they said, what's up with these national parks? Did the electrical outlets stink? These pads are broken. They're crumbling. I can't get any fresh water. I, I'm having difficulty finding a place to shower. And, and good thing for us, I believe they just passed the National Parks Act where they're gonna be investing $900 million a year into our national parks to help with that infrastructure to make it an even more enjoyable time for people who wanna get out and enjoy the beautiful uh, parks and scenery that this country have to offer. Absolutely. I think the downside of that actually right now though, uh, national parks, of course, uh, due to COVID, they were closed for uh, a good period of time. Uh, you had some of your local, your national uh, or state parks. You know, I know a couple of the state parks around here, down at the lake, uh, they were open. But what's happened is if you've not, you know, planned out in advance and, and you're thinking that you're going to get a, a KOA campsite pad and you know that's going to have the the full electrical and and water hookups you are sadly mistaken because these things the, the national parks state parks all of the campsites i mean they're full we're we're selling a lot of campers we're getting a lot of people back into this industry uh but i don't think anybody was prepared for this i mean so uh, this is a great as we've heard Greg talk about, I mean, if you need to, you know, boondock, if you need to set up off the grid. The, the negative effect of the, the boon has been um, people can't get sites. Uh, we've heard that from a lot of our full-time customers yeah. that it's really challenging now trying to find a place to stay. They're trying to find places for like a month at a time um, or more to set up and live their life and experience different parts of the U.S. And it's been very challenging because there's just such a high demand and there's a lower supply um, from camping. It's, it's, it's not ready for the, the big boom. I think that you're ready for the big boom. We have a two-thirds acre lot right out back for oh. some storage, don't we? Nice Was segue. That I segue? love that. Oh, no. Yes. So I try. That I try. is. In fact, that's <laughs> another issue that in our town, in Kansas City, I'm assuming like my friend Tim in St. Louis, they're going to have that same problem as well because they're having a huge boom in, in the camper sales there as well. Even just on an average year, we don't have near the the storage for these campers and now you throw in this 
COVID, this, these Corona campers, these new campers buyers, a lot of them had never even thought of that. They didn't ask the question. Certainly the salesperson didn't offer it up to them either, you know, that, oh, you better think about where you're gonna store it because most HOAs aren't gonna let you park in the driveway. And, oh, and by the way, all of the caves are already full. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, so I had an opportunity. I, I went ahead and leased uh, the, the two thirds of an acre behind us. And I think that is gonna be important. It's gonna be an outdoor storage. Um, and for both RV and boats, we have had several calls as of this past week or so since we started this campaign. Um, and it's really gonna start to flood, I imagine, in you know, late September, October, when people realize that <laughs> there is no more places to store your camper. And so, but again, one of the benefits or one of the you know, problems that this has created, I guess, and certainly with the, the big stuff, the, the big fifth wheels, the big uh, class A's, I mean, they not only paid top dollar for their for their RV, but they're gonna pay top dollar to keep it somewhere nice. And we hope to satisfy that as well. So you kind of get some inconvenience from this market booming like it is. There's certain things that are and aren't available. And I think that's gonna allow for others to fill in that need. Uh, they're gonna find out that, was it inconvenience is the mother of all innovation? Um, I think some people are going to come up with some good ideas. We're going to see some newer camping ideas that are implemented. Um, you know, you talk about this 41-foot version, what, $230,000-ish dollars for something like this. But you're going to find something for everybody in need for everybody. Do you see a trend? Do you see an inconvenience that maybe spacecraft is going to be filling in the near future? Well, I think to talk a little bit about what you had said before that uh, something like this isn't necessarily for the first time owner. Um, I think what we'll be able to fill in later is people have tried out maybe a couple of different campers and I like this about this one, I like this about this one, but it's not perfect for me. Let me build the perfect trailer for me and we'll be able to fill that uh, void for people that there's nothing out there that fits their exact need but we can build it exactly how they want. Uh, typically, we're the, the fourth or fifth trailer in somebody's uh, lifetime, and they've experienced a number of different things that, uh, man, I just wish I could do this, or I wish I could do this, and we can do that for them. And that's uh, what I think we'll be able to do in the future. People will realize that, oh, I don't have to have it this way. I can really change it and make it the way that I want it. When you head out into the wilderness, whether it be a lake, a river, the mountains, Heck, maybe it's just out on your uncle's property. You're going to have different activities that you're going to be doing. Uh, there's a lot of specific things that an RV or a motor, a motor home uh, can answer for you with the toys. You're going to be out. You're going to be running through the mud and the muck. When you come back up to your RV, you want to clean your boots off. You want to uh, wash your feet off with an outdoor shower unit, something like that. Uh, there's so many specific, unique details to each unit that can really answer a need and a niche for people and what they're looking for. And it is a, a point of education and just a, a bit of a heads up to those of you that are heading out to the lot and you're going to get into RVs for the first time, ask a lot of questions. If the person that's talking to you isn't asking you a lot of questions, you may not find yourself leaving the lot in the right unit in the exact specifications that you need. They're going to help you enjoy your time outdoors. So I would always encourage anybody to ask those questions and really think about what you're doing with your time because nowadays they have manufactured these units to pretty much uh, give you a an answer for what you're looking for and to help you specify your needs when you head out into the field. So you're on the lot, you're actually talking to the sales guy. If they're asking you questions, you're asking them questions, you're having your needs met and fulfilled, you may very well have yourself a customer for life. Uh, you help them with their needs to begin with, they've graduated a little bit, their family grows a little bit, maybe they're tasting food or television size grows a little bit and they're coming back to you. How important is it to communicate, talk to these customers, and, and not just sell them an item or a unit, but be their friend, be their educator, and help them make good decisions as they move forward. 
Well, I think I'll just touch real quick on that. I mean, if you're helping customers, if you're listening to what the customers want and you're actually trying to get them the best camper to suit their needs, I think if, if you've got someone who does get the camper and they get to use it in those first couple of seasons and they're like, wow, we really enjoyed this. Their kids really enjoyed it. They've got that bond now. Well, the, if you did your job right, and, and you mentioned this earlier too, Greg, but they're gonna come back to you. They're gonna say, hey, listen, you know, the kids are bigger, or, you know, we need something bigger, we need something differ, different. And, and as you mentioned, that customer for life, is that, that's where it starts. If you take care of your customers and you get them what they want, and then as they gradually change, or even downsize, right, they can change. And especially with your campers, I mean, you've got these monstrosities, these huge, beautiful campers. I mean, these yeah, people. There's been some really fun stories over even just the last two and a half years of me being there. Uh, you know, we really try to get down to the uh, details of what a customer is looking for. Uh, typically, they have one or two things that they're focused on. Like, I have to have a king bed. Jay, you mentioned that to me. If I was building with you, Greg, I'd have a king bed, and that's where we would start from. Um, we had one customer that they wanted a soda fountain. Um, they didn't want to have to stop at the uh, gas station anymore to get their Diet Coke. So we integrated that into the build, and that was one of the focal points, being able to put the chiller and the syrup and CO2 and everything with that system in there. Uh, so there's, there's typically one or two things that we're focused on with the customer to uh, build, but then we go through everything with them and simple things that maybe they don't think about, um, having access to the refrigerator, a toilet, and a bed uh, when they're out on the road so they don't have to um, deploy the unit when they're at a rest area or to grab lunch or to um, put their groceries in. Um, we try to give them a lot of that wisdom that we've uh, obtained over the years and um, really help them uh, meet all of their um, needs and wants. Uh, we typically tell people we're going to focus on your needs, we'll prioritize your wants, and we'll try to integrate as much of that as we can into the parameters they've given us, whether it's length or cost or uh, a number of other, other variables, but we work with them to maximize the value within their uh, kind of uh, bubble or the, the, the unit that they're building. What an interesting conversation today that we've had with J.E. Yeah. and Greg. Absolutely. I think we could probably sit down. We, we could do this for six, seven hours a day, every day. I'm sure our production crew you would may. appreciate that. Um, but a good conversation today. In closing, give me 30 to 60 seconds of, of your final words, something you'd like to say to people that are listening to this podcast or watching us today on YouTube. Well, I think the... The reason behind these podcasts or the, you know, the, just these informational things is the fact that we want to make people aware that in the RV industry, you know, people are hearing, I mean, it started from all of these articles that people were doing, right? Coming out here, making us part of those articles because of what's going on, because of COVID. We felt like, let's, let's answer some of these questions and what, you know, with your background in broadcasting and, and mine and, and Greg's, we thought, well, why not give it uh, a, a little different spin, right? And, and let's talk about what RVing means to us and hopefully get more people involved in it. And, and obviously we want some feedback as well. Sure, and it's not JE's RVs, it's KC RVs. And we hope to talk to people it's with RVs right. all around Kansas City uh, whether there are other dealers, other financial opportunities, yep. you know, we're going to talk to them. We want to be a part of the community and not just our own. Uh, finally, if you could give us your last words, Greg. I would say don't be afraid of RVing. Uh, go out there and enjoy the, the world with an RV. And for us uh, as spacecraft, we'll do everything we can to give you exactly what you want uh, in a unit that maybe you didn't even think was possible. Uh, so test us, uh, take us to another level, and we'll do everything we can to build you the perfect trailer. So on behalf of Greg Wallman and J.E. Cornwell, I'm John Thomas. We're signing off. We'll see you out and about.